I, 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 just, I just want to encourage you to read that because it's, it's a, uh, how do you say it? It talks about the relationship that goes on between us. And so what I always told my students, because I, I read that book and I, I started understanding about shepherd and sheep. And so what, what I said to them over and over while I was teaching up at Central, I said, said, it doesn't matter where you wander. It doesn't matter how far you walk. You're never lost when you're a sheep as long as you stay close to the shepherd. Okay? It doesn't matter where life takes you. You stay close to the shepherd. Okay? You'll never be lost when you're close to the shepherd. You know, this verses 28 and 29, I want to take a minute to look at that. I, I know there's debate about these and verses, what they mean and all that stuff and doctrines and all that. If you're focused on that, I, I, I just want to say to you nicely, you're missing the point. Okay? You're missing the point. These two verses, notice they're parallel. It's a parallel construct in, he, in, in a Hebraic type literature. And what it's what he's doing is saying, Jesus says, and nothing will ever snatch them out of my hand. And at the end of verse 29, he says, nothing will ever snatch them out of God's hand. What he's doing is saying, God and I are one. How do we know that? Because verse 30, he says it. He comes right out and says it. He's not talking about eternal security or any of that mumbo jumbo. What he's doing is saying, the Father and I are one. Because I protect my own and the Father protects his own and, and nothing can take them away. It's about providing protection, not preventing defection. Verse 30 is an undeniable truth which leads us to a spiritual collision. Jesus and the Father are one. The Jews picked up stones again is what it says. Again, or had they before? John chapter 8, verse 59. Same people or same spirit, regardless, they picked up rocks. Though some folks today may try to explain away Jesus' deity claims, folks in that day knew exactly what Jesus was saying. You being a man, make yourself out to be God. Stone throwers, don't they seem holy and pure and righteous in their words? Actually, they're only holier than thou, puritanical and self-righteous. The character of one's works manifests the nature of his or her identity. Verse 32, your works make you known. That's why Jesus says things like Matthew 12, 34, out of the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. And Matthew 23, 3, Therefore, all that they tell you, the religious leaders, do and observe, but do not do, not do according to their deeds. For they see things and do not do them. The NIV says, they do not practice what they preach. They're presumptuous, antagonistic, stiff-necked, and hard-hearted windbags who prefer to argue their point rather than to understand God's real truth. Nevertheless, in spite of the Jewish leader's contempt for Jesus Christ and God's truth, Jesus refuses to back down. Instead, he doubles down by using Psalm 82.6 and goes through this obscure passage of Scripture coupled with their view of the inerrancy of Scripture to argue his own point that he is God in the flesh. Obviously, Jesus will not recant his equality with God. The opposition will not conform their hearts and minds to God's truth. And collisions are inevitable. And so, the second point to get out of this passage is, collisions result when we stand our ground. Collisions result. Stand your ground. If you're standing on the truth, stand your ground. Okay? Okay? It's going to happen. Nevertheless, 
The time's not right, and the prophecies must be fulfilled accurately. Jesus counted the cost and realized this is not the hill to die on now. Instead, he'll die on another hill on the right day in the right way. Not every collision must end in death. Jesus leaves to argue another day. It's so difficult in the heat of an argument to con- collect your thoughts, weigh the sides, make a clear and concise decision, walk away from the battle. However, so frequently it's, ex- it's exactly the holy, pure, and righteous thing to do. To walk away, even though you're right. In verse 40, Jesus stole away because he was tired and wanted some peace. Conflict is exhausting and you're you're always right, like Jesus. Do yourself a favor. Don't argue when you're tired. Just go to bed. Only idiots argue when they're tired. Don't be an idiot. Follow Jesus, okay? That's good advice when you get married, too. I want to tell you. Don't fight when you're tired. Because Jesus walked away, verse 39 to 40, look what happened in verse 42. Many believed in him there. He walked away. Wow. Many believed in him when he walked away. He didn't have to bludgeon them with the truth. He was right. And he walked away. Romans 12, 17, 21. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay. You will heap burning. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. That's a blessing in the ancient world. That's a blessing. It means your fire went out and they gave you coals to start another one. Do not become, be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Remember, count the cost and realize you need not die on every hill today. Not every collision must end in death. Walk away and find a place of peace. Revise your habits, soften your heart, follow the example of Jesus Christ. Third point, revisions result when we conform to Christ. Revisions result when we conform to Christ. Divisions, collisions, revisions are part of life. How will you respond whenever they arise? Don't forget, Jesus died for the Jewish leaders who picked up stones. Two. Let's pray together. Father, help us to be a people that, first of all, hold on to the truth, that seek out truth and grasp it and cling to it and love it. Help us to hold on to the truth. Some of it, Father, some of us need to learn to welcome opposition as an opportunity to share the truth. So often we avoid confrontation. But it can be a good thing. It can be a good tool. Help us to use it well and be wise. Father, help us to follow the example of Jesus and behave peacefully whether other people accept the truth or not. May we be like Jesus. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen.